go into uh, Dobbins United Methodist Church in Delanco. I've got a police escort this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't go down normally for that cup of coffee this morning down at the fellowship time, maybe you want to wait at least 10 minutes till after our next day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We are on a mission from God. Henry, Henry Hall, would you just please stay? <laughs> They listed all the dear departed, and uh, <laughs> Henry's name was there. <laughs> and as Mark Train would, Mark Train would say, rumors of Henry's death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he talks, he sings, he's pushing doors open by himself. <laughs> Henry, we're glad you're with us. <laughs> You're going to see them people later today, right, Henry? Yes, I am. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Give them a pinch in the name of the Lord, all right? <laughs> Amen. Our title of this morning's message is Connected. It's found in John 15, verses 1 through 8. Let's share God's word. <clears throat> I am the true vine, the genuine vine, says the Lord. My father is the vine grower. He removes every branch of me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, but this, apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Please pray with me. May the Lord richly bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. Growing up in East Brunswick, New Jersey, a bit like Cinnaminson, farmland that was developed in the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, growing up in East Brunswick, New Jersey, on our quarter acre of paradise, my dad did a lot of planting. Huge amount. My dad's theory was this. He said, the first five years you plant, the next 20 you cut. Because all the stuff you plant needs to be pruned and taken care of. But two things I remember very distinctly. We had grapevines. I even looked this up. There, I remembered it right. We had hemrod, which were green grapes, and concord, which were purple. My dad gave him a lot of attention. The more attention he gave them, especially cutting them back drastically and pruning them, the better they produced fruit. In fact, on some years with bumper crops, my mom even made her own grape jelly. God often referred to Israel as a vine, a vineyard, a symbol of the nation. He does it in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Psalm 80 and 8. He says, you brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. There was also a great golden vine in front of the temple. It was a, a decoration placed in front of the temple. In fact, our Lord and Savior may have been passing by this very decoration, this vine, when he taught this. To the disciples. 
However, I need to give you a heads up. In the Old Testament, whenever vine or vineyard is mentioned, it's always in the context of it not being everything that God created it to be. Yielding wild grapes and inferior fruit. The problem was this. The branches not being connected. And our theme today is how you and I are to be good branches. Jesus holds on to us. The gospel this morning is telling us we also need to hold on to him. Very important. By the way, in the Old Testament, whenever it mentions fruitfulness, and there's a problem with fruitfulness, it's related to one thing, faithfulness. Fruitfulness and faithfulness are the same thing in God's vocabulary. Because faithfulness automatically yields fruitfulness. Which brings us to our text. Jesus says, I am the true vine. Alethenos, genuine. Jesus himself, he says it right away. I am the genuine vine. Not nation, not religion, not bloodline. I am it, Jesus says. I am the real deal, the real thing. I am the new Israel, Jesus tells us. He removes every branch, and I am the true vine. My father is the vine grower. He removes every branch of me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. It's interesting. Sometimes your, your Bible translation may say the word purge instead of prune. You've got to go back. There's a problem in translation. We always read a translation of God's Word. The original Greek is kathyro. Probably where we get the word catharsis from, which means to cleanse. I had a cathartic experience. Means to cleanse. Purge, prune. Not just to prune, though, but you have to know this about vines and vineyards and grapevines. You don't just prune them back, but you have to lift them and clean them and get them off the ground. You ever need to be lifted up? Do you ever need to be clean? Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Do you ever need intense attention from the vine grower? Do you ever need to be pruned of what is not necessary or helpful? You and I, fruit-bearing disciples, we are works in progress. Well, that's what it means when Jesus says that even when you bear fruit, I'm going to prune you. I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to lift you. I'm going to work with you. God is on our case. Whom the Lord loves, the Lord corrects, God's word tells us. God is not through with us yet. God never created anything finished. One of the commentaries I read, this was kind of, uh, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, Vernon McGee, still heard on the radio, one of the most popular Bible teachers, he's been dead for years. One time he played hooky in school years ago, and this was back when they had corporal punishment. And uh, they cut school, and they decided to go back and get their books, so their parents would think they were in school. And uh, the principal was waiting for them as they got their books. And back in those days, they had paddles. And uh, one of the older kids said to Jay Vernon McGee, when the headmaster starts paddling you, if you don't want it to hurt so much, he says the reaction is, the first thing you want to do is to step away. But he says, if you step back, the whack won't be as hard. If you step back in there. J. Vernon McGee said this. He said, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. The closer you are to God, the less the discipline will feel by harsh discipline. Interesting. Cleansing. Years ago, we would go to uh, 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 
to a uh, celebration they had at Maranatha on a Halloween. Halloween's a kind of a dubious holiday. So when we had real small children, we figured we'd be safe at a Pentecostal church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just go into Pentecostals and you'll be okay on Halloween. Whatever they do, do what they do. Well, they had this, uh, this fun house, or this gospel house, I think they called it. And uh, you went through all these different rooms. There was a sin room. And then all of a sudden, you're in this room that was totally white. They called it the clean room. They said, this is what Jesus does for you. This is what Jesus does for you. It's like verse 3. You have already been cleansed by the word I have spoken to you. The whole of Jesus' teaching that exposes and corrects grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. His word, his teaching, it makes us clean. Like his mother says at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Listen to him. Do whatever he tells you to do. Wow. The quality of the fruit depends on the branch's connectedness to the vine itself. <coughs> verse 5 is a memory verse for me. Let me say verse 4 before, beforehand. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. <clears throat> what can we do apart from Jesus? Nothing. nothing. Let's hear that again. What can we do apart from Jesus? Nothing. nothing. Jesus, help us. Abide. What is that? Constant, intense communion. Jesus is holding on to us. Hold on to Him. Constant, intense communion. Hold on to His teaching. Do what He tells you to do. If you hear a promise, claim it. If you hear a promise, claim it. If you hear a command, obey it. When you hear a fact from Jesus, believe it. Take a close look at a grapevine. It's very difficult to tell the vines apart individually. It's quite entangled. The quality of the branches and fruit depends totally on their connectedness to the vine. A close, personal <coughs> communion with Jesus and an interconnectedness, interconnectedness to other branches is the key. By the way, heavy dose of humility. We are fruit-bearing not fruit making. We can't bear, we can't make fruit. We can only bear fruit. And then one of the commentaries I read, our efforts apart from Jesus to make fruit are like trying to attach imitation grapes to the vine. My mother had those imitation grapes out. You know, and every now and then as a stupid kid, I just had to put one in my mouth and chew on it. Ah, they taste terrible. Verse 6, just kind of tracking through this thing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. What does this mean? Well, it means what it says. It also tells us something about grapevines. Useless grapevines are not even good for firewood. A useless grapevine you couldn't even... When they call for firewood, to don't bring any used grapevines. What they did with used grapevines is they had a huge bonfire and they throw them in and get rid of the worthless grapevines. Barclay, the Daily Study Bible's got that little, got that, uh, that, that, that whole series says this. Uselessness invites disaster in the kingdom of God. Uselessness invites disaster in the kingdom of God. Verses 7 and 8. Jesus, the true vine, 
is inviting us into a very special relationship. Don't miss this. Jesus is inviting us into a very, very, very special relationship. This abiding, this, this connectedness, how to, be, how, how to be good vines, how to, how to stay connected to Him. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, it will be done for you. If you and I live in this intimate relationship, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Jesus has big plans for us. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. I went through a lot of commentaries. I, I, I felt a conviction in my heart recently that, that I need to learn. I need to keep learning. I see my 80-some-year-old uh, professor at Eastern Baptist Theological Seminary doing research in the library. It's like that was a, a living parable to me. You know, out of all the commentaries I looked at, though, only the United Methodist commentary said that. Bear much fruit. Well, what does that mean? Acts of love. That's what it means. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The United Methodist Commentary, the New Interpreter's Bible, bear much fruit means this. Doing acts of love. Other commentaries picked up on this, and I'm cool with it. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. God's grace and love always comes to us on the way to someone else. God's grace and love always comes to us on the way to someone 